A lot of times when you get a new dog, you're super excited, you're ready for this puppy to come or this new dog to come, and then you start to realize, I need to get supplies. So then you jump online or you go to the pet store, and when you get there, you get overwhelmed with what the selection is, and you go, oh my god, I don't even know. And it starts to make you question, do I have everything? What else do I need? Do I need this thing? What's going on? And that's what we're going to talk about on this week's episode. We're going to talk about the, a, a shopping list that's going to help you get everything you need to start your puppy out on the right path. Let's dive into it next. All right, welcome to this week's episode of the Learn, Laugh, Bark podcast. I am your host, Jake, from OnDogTrainingAcademy.com. I'm really excited to be going over this stuff because I do think this is an area that is somewhat covered, but I don't know if it's covered enough, and I feel like it's something that we get a lot of our clients talking to us, and that is, what the heck am I supposed to get our dog? And, and how do I know I have everything? And then a lot of times then, once you get the dog, you're then playing catch up and you're ordering stuff. And as people know right now with Amazon and stuff like that, you're not always getting things fast. And then if you go to a store, half the time they're sold out of whatever it is you need because while it's probably a pretty important thing, it's a staple. So a lot of people are, are ordering it. And especially right now because a lot of people are getting new dogs. We're getting close to spring. People are getting prepared. So we're going to be talking about getting you guys mentally and 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 just stocked wise prepared and so you'll know what to go to the store and get ahead of time of getting your new dog. Now you might say, "Well, I already have my new dog." That's okay. You can you can definitely play catch up with this, but it's always good. Hopefully you're watching this and this if you just got your dog or you're thinking about getting a dog, whatever, this is going to help you guys out. For sure. And I also encourage you guys to stick to the end of this this week's podcast. Uh, I do have a, a special surprise for you guys um, that's going to be super helpful, I believe, as well. So make sure you stick to the end for that. Um, also, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's listening to us on our podcast. Um, whatever platform it is you're supporting us on, we greatly appreciate it. And then, of course, on YouTube, if you're watching this on, on there, thank you guys. I know you can see me. I'll give you a little wave. Uh, thank you guys for, for again, supporting us. This is awesome. We are really thankful for the feedback and everything we're getting. Um, it's been really fun doing these, and so we're going to continue doing them for ever, I suppose. Foreseeable future, at least. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and uh, start talking about it. So you're going to get this <clears throat> new dog, and you're coming up with the must-haves, right? The must-haves. And when we started putting this list together, we started thinking, Okay, what is necessary? What is, in our opinion, and obviously this is all our opinion, but what is some necessary things? And we started writing down the obvious ones, you know, and we'll talk about all of those. And then we started writing down more and more and more. And we started going, well, shit, like that is a lot of stuff. There is a lot of things on this list. Like, I understand now why people um, don't necessarily remember or forget things. So we're going to start out at the top. And this is what I call the first the first group of things I call the obvious. These are things you know already know you need to get, but it's and it's obvious, but I think it's fair to be covered as well. And that is you want to start out with food. Obviously, I assume at least you're feeding your dog. Um, so you're going to want to have some sort of high quality food. Now, high quality food is going to be a podcast unto its own someday um, just because there's a lot out there. But you can do research on this as well. I like to give my dog uh, a really good quality food. I'm looking at ingredients. I'm looking at you know what the food, who the food's designed for, small breed, large breed, active breed, whatever. One thing I'll just say to keep in mind, because this is kind of a pet peeve of mine, is if you're getting a food that says active dog or active breed, because you have an active breed. Now it doesn't. It, when, when they say active breed dog food, they mean food for dogs who are hunting or or tracking or doing stuff that's burning tons of calories tons of energy just because you have a springer spaniel or a high high energy lab or something like that that doesn't mean you should be feeding them active dog food it just means you you have an you have a dog that could potentially be active so keep this in mind just because you have a hyper dog doesn't mean they should be eating a dog food that's designed for active dogs you don't need to give your energetic dog more energy especially if they don't have a good avenue for getting that energy out um, the next one then is water. 
we, we, I'm not saying buy water, but like you, you have to obviously come up with ways to make sure your dog has water. Now there's a few different options for that. You can obviously go with, go with bowls and we'll talk about bowls here in a second, but you can go with bowls. Um, you can go with a dog fountain or, or just a water fountain. We have cats as well. So we actually really like to do the water fountain because flowing water tends to attract cats to drink more. Cats need to drink water. Well, duh. Um, so it, that's what we've been using, but our dog also likes to, to drink out of the fountain as well. Um, he'll drink out of a, a regular bowl, but he likes to drink out of a fountain. Now, personally for me, the size of the bowl when it comes to water bowls is important. I want a bowl that's a little bit more substantial. The reason for that, and there's not a ton of science behind this, but the reason for that is when the dog is drinking its water, if you're in a, if it's in a small bowl, for one, as it's drinking, the water is going to be shooting out and it's going to be going somewhere, right? It's going to get on your floor and yeah, you can put mats down and, and do all that and that's fine. But we also need to make sure that that you can contain it some. So I think if you get a larger bowl, when that dog's drinking water and then pulls away, you're going to collect at least the heaviest flow of water coming out of their mouth in the water bowl. Yes, it means you have to change the water more often, but it also means you're not going to walk across that area with your socks on and have gross, wet socks. So I think that's a fair trade-off. So an oversized water bowl, I like um, or a water fountain. They sell water fountains that are awfully large. They work great too. Now let's talk about food bowls. So food bowls, there's a ton of variety of food bowls when it comes to what you could choose from. If you have a dog that eats really intense, you could certainly go to like a slow feeder bowl, which means the dog has to work around, um, something, whether it's a, a spiral something or whatever, the dog has to work around something. It slows them down a little bit. Does your dog want a plastic bowl? Does your dog want a metal bowl? Does your dog want a a uh, uh, clay or ceramic style bowl. I tend to stay away from those just because if you have a dog that even tries to pick the bowl up at all, they'll pick it up, drop it, they'll break it. So I tend to lean more towards metal or plastic. Um, <clears throat> but again, it kind of depends on your dog. It kind of depends on what they're used to. If you're getting a puppy or even if you're getting a, a rescue dog or whatever, see what the dog is eating out of now. You know, a lot, you know, the breeders are going to have the dogs on some sort of kibble or something um, when they go home and what bowls are they using? If they're using a metal bowl and this dog is eating, it might be just an easy transition to go right to metal. Some dogs, most dogs don't care. They'll, they just want food. So they don't care if you serve it to them on a plate, on a paper plate, on the floor. I don't recommend that, but, or in a bowl, they just want to eat it. So it doesn't really matter, but there's a lot to consider there. Like I said, slow feeder. Do you want to go larger bowl? If you're going to put a bunch of food in a bowl, I like to go with a little bit of a bigger bowl, just because if you fill a bowl up to the absolute top and max it out, Again, it spills out everywhere, and it's just kind of a mess and, and, and whatever. So that's the obvious stuff. Now let's get into what I call the yums, the yummies. And this is treats, things like that. So the first thing is I like to have two different types. I have well, two different styles of treats, I should say. I have a variety of treats just because I like to mix it up a little bit when I'm training my dog. Um, but the first one is like a biscuit, a hard, crunchy biscuit. Now, they're boring, and some dogs don't care. Some dogs will eat them and just be totally cool with it, which is awesome. But I like to use those when I'm putting my dog in their kennel, when I'm giving them a treat for something that I don't need fast repetitions for. If I'm going to do um, fast repetitions, I'm going to go with more of a soft treat, and that is my training treat. And there's a huge variety of treats out there that are designed for that, but I like soft treats. I like treats that are easily eaten aren't crumbly, don't make a mess, and the dogs can can quickly eat it and move on. Repetition is key for that. Um, the next thing then is is, is what I call uh, entertainment. We have to be able to entertain our animals, and, and um, sometimes that can be hard. But there's ways that I think sometimes people aren't using, utilizing, that are, are great for it. Um, it the, the big thing is like interactive feeders. So... You know, my mentality when it comes to feeding feeding your dog, especially new dogs or young dogs especially, is if you're not taking at least one of those meals a day and taking the food out of their bowl and using it for whether you're going to just say, hey, I'm going to take your food, put it in my pocket, and we're going to do training and you're going to get your, your meal one treat at a time, or <clears throat> if you're going to take the food and put it into some sort of puzzle game, um, <clears throat> Kong makes a thing called a wobbler that wobbles around. The dog has to just kind of beat it up and it spits treats out or spits its food out as the dog is interacting with it. There's puzzle games where dogs have to move things and do certain things. There's ways you can, you, what it's, what's allowing you to do is that you're, you're allowing the dog to be able to, 
to utilize a little mental stimulation, use that mental energy. So it, it tires them out a little bit. It gets them thinking as opposed to just put the food in the bowl, dog scarfs it down. And within a matter of 20 seconds or less, it's done. The game kind of extends it and it makes the dog work. And I think dogs do like to work for their food. Um, you probably see it in dog and just when you're training your dog, they're willing to work for that treat. So they'll probably be willing to work for their kibble as well. So I think that's a really uh, good thing. Chews and bones. <clears throat> now, safe edible bones, you're talking about greenies, whimsies, things like that that aren't going to be like lasting a, t- a super long time, but they're stuff the dogs can chew on. It's not something I give the dog every night, but I think it's really good to have as a, as a now and then snack, I guess you could call it. Um, and, and I don't like to use, like when it comes to edible chews, I don't like to use raw hides, anything like that. Just because they tend to obstruct in the dog's stomach if they eat too big of chunks. I'm fine with bully sticks. Those are fine. Just we have to watch them and make sure that they don't, when they get really small, we're swapping away and re- replacing it, throwing that one in the garbage. So, um, edible bones, edible treats, those are really, or edible chews, I should say, are really good. Non edible bones, I think, are equally as important, though. So, you're talking about your Nyla bones, your Benny bones, your life stages bones. I don't even know. But there's a lot of different bones out there that are hard bones that are, are, non-edible bones that the dogs really enjoy to chew on especially when you have young dogs going through teething or if you have a dog that's just a natural chewer it's really good to have these bones around now maybe you have some bones at home and you're like well my dog doesn't want to chew on them taking a little bit of that soft training treat that we talked about earlier rub that scent on that bone a little bit help build the interest in that bone and then offer it back to your dog a lot of times dogs like bones that have already been started and no i'm not well i suppose you could chew on the bone yourself if you'd like but I probably would recommend just um, rubbing some treat on it and trying to get the dog to start it on their own. I don't think I'm going to recommend chewing on a dog's bone. No, I mean, they have bacon flavor and stuff, so maybe it'd be good. I don't know. Kind of doubt it. Anyways, the next one is then when it comes to entertainment is you're talking about uh, uh, <clears throat> durable toys. You know, it's it's always easy to go to, to the local store and buy, you know, toys for like a dollar or something. And... You're like, look at all the toys I got. It only cost me 10 bucks. Oh my God, my dog's going to love it. In a matter of like three days, all those toys are dead. De-stuffed, torn up, ripped up. There's a reason why they're a dollar. Um, they're cheap They're cheap toys. So we need to make sure that we are really working on... Um, sorry, I got dogs behind me making noise. Uh, really working on, on giving them toys that are a little bit tougher. You got tire biters. You've got... Um, jolly balls you have even just like uh toughy toys and things like that those are really good stronger toys yes you have to pay more but do you really have to you know it's like yeah you're gonna you're gonna buy one toy that's gonna cost 10 or 20 toys but it'll probably last way longer than those toys we have toys here that are seven eight years old and we have dogs playing with them all the time so you want to make sure you're having those reliable i think quality durable toys um the next one then is we'll talk about is containment because when you get this new dog you're going to want to contain it right you're not going to just let it run loose in your house you're setting yourself up for trouble you're setting yourself for potty training issues destructive behavior and if these things get practiced these things can easily become habit so we need to make sure that we're, we're keeping them uh, uh contained so we're talking about exercise pens just having a pen that pops up that you can put your dog into and you can still hang out with them, but it's minimizing where they're allowed to go. Baby gates, crates, um, travel crates. So if you're traveling with your dog, get get something so that you can travel with them. If, if your goal, and this is this is a tip for for puppies especially, if your goal is to travel a lot with your dog, and you're like, well, I'm going to buy a harness and buckle my dog in. That's a great idea, but I try to hold off on doing that until the dog's older, because most of the time puppies will chew on that that harness or that strap and could potentially break it or just make it not safe. The point of it is if you get in an accident, it stops them. And if it's chewed on and frayed and weak, there's potential it'll fail, and that's not the point of this. So I prefer, especially when they're younger, crates. We crate all the time in our vehicles, 100%. Like if I'm going somewhere my dog loads with me, he's going into his kennel. No questions asked. I don't even do the harness thing with him. Kennel's the safest thing. Um, but yeah, so crates, travel crates, all those different things. The next one then is kind of fell into a category on its own i just call it comfy stuff you know the dog has to be comfortable now maybe the dog can't have a uh can't have something in their kennel 
that I totally understand. If the dog is destructive, fine. If the dog de-stuffs dog beds, so you go out and you spend a bunch of money in a dog bed, and then the dog tears it up in its kennel, well, we're not going to do that again. Um, I like to go with more for, for the kennels. I go with like the, the polyfill-less uh, beds, so your fleece blankets, some sort of... You could do moving blankets. Those are really good, heavy, hardy blankets that will give padding for the dog, but not as much joy in trying to rip it up. Um, but some dogs just don't want it in there. And if the dog doesn't want it or hasn't earned it, they don't get it. And, but dog beds, it's always nice to have dog beds out, um, in your house, laying around certain places. So finding something that's really good. Now this, again, I talk about quality and you should definitely go, you can get, I mean, you can get memory foam, uh, dog beds, all this different stuff. Go with what you can get. Um, cheaper ones. Yeah. They'll hold up, but they tend to wear down. It's like buying a cheap pillow. Works good at first, and then really quickly you start to notice it gets kind of unstuffed or just isn't less comfortable. Everything gets compressed easier. Um, so it's a little bit of a good thing for a while, and then it starts to go south. Um, but beds, I think, are are very important. The next thing, then, is safety. So we need to make sure that we our dogs are safe. Well, the way we do that is for um, getting some sort of collar on them. I don't like the dogs to not have a collar because I feel like if they just go collarless all the time, especially when they're new and they don't have um, uh, a good recall or good training yet, I like to make sure that we have some sort of collar on them so I can grab their collar, have control of them. Same thing with like ID tags, plates, embroidered, some sort of identification on them to say, hey, this is who the dog is. This is how you can get a hold of me so my dog can come home. Um, you can also do microchipping and all that because that's obviously easy to do as well. But make sure you... Sorry, I got a dog behind me chewing on a bone. Hey, Hazel, can, can, can you give it a rest for just a second, please? I'm trying to tell people stuff. We'll be right back. Hello, this is Panic. And this is Sarah. And, and you, you are, are listening, listening to Music Elixir. Elixir. A podcast between two friends discussing their favorite Asian artists and music. She said no. Um, sorry, guys. So, anyways, uh, microchip is always a good thing as well. Microchip's a good identification in case they slip their collars, but I would rather have the collar with the ID on it as well. Might as well double up on safety with that. Not a big deal. And then always check with your city to see what kind of licensing you need. Do you need a license for your dog? Do you need to register your dog? Does it have to have rabies? When does it need it? We'll talk about that stuff later too. Um, well, I guess not. But you know, making sure whatever you need to do to register for your city is happening. The next one then is for when it comes to safety is aside from a collar, I like to have a harness. Now harnesses isn't something that I like to have my dog wear all the time. I don't support like having them wear a collar all the time. I'd rather have them, um, wear it part of the time, uh, like when we're training or working, but I think a harness, some sort of either regular harness, no pull harness is really good. Um, Regular leashes, four to six foot leashes, I think are super important. Again, that should almost fall into obvious. You know you're going to need collars. You know you're going to need leashes for your dog. Um, and then a retractable leash. So surprisingly, yes, I do like retractable leashes or a long line if necessary. Retractable leashes are great for pottying your dog because you can bring your dog out. You can hook them to something that's not their training leash and you can let them wander around and go to the bathroom and it's all good to go. So I certainly think that a uh, retractable leash is a good tool to have. So don't be afraid of them. Don't go, well, my, my trainer said they were bad. Well, I'm, I'm telling you guys, and, and you can believe your trainer over me, it's fine. Retractable leashes are terrible for training when it comes to like healing, sits down, taking your dog to a class, don't bring them in on a retractable leash. But when it comes to exercising your dog, pottying your dog, working on recalls with your dog, a lot of different things like that, they're fine. They work great. They're a great tool. The next group is what I call the yuck stuff. So the yuck stuff is, is the necessities that we don't really want to have as a necessity. Well, I don't say we don't want to have to, but it's just the gross stuff. First one is poop bags, because guess what guys, your dogs are going to poop and they're going to poop in somewhere that's going to need to be picked up and they're going to poop in public. And so you're going to want to have bags with you. When I take my dog anywhere, they have bags with them. 
and it's just or I have bags with me and it's important we just clean up after the dog and we're good to go um, so make sure you have poop bags with you now for the house a pooper scooper a scoop is really easy you walk around you clean up your dog's mess it's winter time right now so I don't know when you're watching this but it's winter time for us right now and I've been really adamant picking up poop outside you know I use a scoop I get it done because if you don't if you don't pick up that poop and you just let it go Springtime is an absolute beast, and it's disgusting, and it's it's just disgusting. That's I think that's the best way to put it. So I like to make sure I got a poop scoop ready to go, and I can clean up after my dog as often as I can, as often as we can get outside, whatever, but it's good to have. Poop scoops, I could go into detail into which ones I prefer, but what I prefer compared to what my wife prefers, the totally opposite. So figure out which one that you like is comfortable to you, Get something so you can pick up your dog's mess. Duh. Um, the next one then is stain removers. So stain and stain removers. Um, <laughs> again, if you're getting a puppy and you're like, "Well, my dog's going to be potty trained right away," you're, you're fooling yourself. You're, you're bound to have an accident or two or six or twelve or more in your house. So having some sort of stain remover. We have a little um, mini vacuum cleaner that or not vacuum but a little spot bot it's called so if a dog has a mess we clean up the mess we 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 get it as good as we can and then we put the spot bot over the top of the accident and it just sits there and it like has a brush in there and it does its own little work you just push a button and then it sucks it all up dries it all whatever and then it's clean stuff like that i think is critical because if you're letting your dog have a bunch of accidents one thing we want to try and get away from is leaving any sort of odor residue in the carpet or in, at that area because that's going to potentially entice the dog to want to go to the bathroom there again later. So I try to make sure it's cleaned, scent free as much as we can. I think it's super important. Last one or last one for this category is carpet protection. So with carpet protection, I think when I when I when we say carpet protection, I actually mean pee pads. Now you might go, "Oh my gosh, he trains with pee pads." I don't. I don't. The reason that I use pee pads is for my, like I have, we do exercise, X pen training, exercise pen training with our puppies right away when they come. And what we tend to do then is we, we have it in our living room and there's carpet. And instead of just having the dog have the exercise pen around him and then carpet right there where the dog could easily have an accident. And then that's a mess. We line it with pee pads. We then lay a blanket over the top of it. Just a cheap one. We got from like a thrift store or something. Lay that over the top, and then we put their kennel treats or uh, kennel bones, toys, all that other stuff in there. And what's nice is if the dog has an accident, all I got to do is lift that blanket up, pull that pee pad out, get rid of that pee pad, and maybe replace the blanket. But the carpet stays clean and nice and new because of the pee pad's uh, absorbing abilities. And so I think it's it's a really good tip. Now make sure you get scentless ones. I don't want one that's going to entice the dog to go to the bathroom. Just get plain old normal pee pads. They're cheap. You can get them. I don't teach my dogs to go to the bathroom on them because I don't think that's valuable, at least for most situations. Um, but that's up to you guys. The next one is grooming. So I'm not going to sit on grooming for too long, but like making sure you have whatever breed you have. Again, these could all be like almost separate episodes unto themselves. Whatever brush you need for the breed you have, make sure you get those brushes. Make sure if, if it's a brush that, or if the dog has an undercoat that needs to be treated, with, with brushing that you have a comb or brush that's going to get there. Nail clippers, whatever you decide to do with that. Dremels, clippers, whatever. Shampoo, ear cleaner, toothbrush, toothpaste. Yes, you do have to brush your dog's teeth. I know when I talk to my clients, a lot of times they're like, really? Brush your dog's teeth? Yeah. Even if you're giving them bones to chew on and stuff like that, it's really good to brush their teeth because it's just... It helps just like with, with anything else. Not only does it allow you to look in their mouth to see what's going on, but it keeps their teeth clean and it means you don't have to go to the vet to have those oral cleanings as often with your dog. And that saves you money. And it saves putting your dog under, which is always something I'm always uncomfortable with. I'll do it, but I don't know. I get a little nervous with it. And then the the, the last group here is just the preventative slash emergency stuff. So you want to make sure, depending on what climate you're in, but basically any climate, um, have your flea and tick preventative, have your heartworm preventatives, make sure that you're, you're giving them the good stuff. Now I'm not going to get into what brands I, I recommend, whatever. I would talk to your vet with that and try to make sure you see what they use, see what they recommend and go from there. And then having some sort of first aid kit, that first aid kit, I think is super, super important. 
um, that's going to have some stuff suitable for your dog. Peroxide, uh, uh, antibacterial cream, uh, wraps, things like that, even a muzzle. I don't care if your dog is friendly. If your dog is injured, a muzzle might be necessary because they're in pain. So just having a small emergency kit. Now, I did promise you, because we are at the end of this podcast, I did promise you that I would have a surprise for you guys at the end. So here's my surprise. I am going to be giving everybody who wants it the list that I just went over because it's so much to remember. If you're sitting here taking notes, throw that piece of paper away. I got you covered. All you're going to do is go into the description below on this on this episode. You're going to see the new dog shopping list. This list is going to have everything, literally everything that I have. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see me holding this thing up. Yes, there's scribbles on it from me, from reading it just now to you guys. But you're going to get something that looks just like this, and this is going to help you. If you're listening to this on the podcast, trust me, guys, download it. It's worth it. Um, this is going to give you everything I just talked about. It's going to have it all there. You can check things off as you go through it. You can decide you don't need some of it. If you say, Hey, I like stinky carpet. I don't need carpet or stain clean or carpet cleaner or anything. Cool. Do what you want to do. I don't recommend it, but do what you want to do. But if you go into the description at the, at in, in the description of this week's episode, you will see a link. All you got to do is click on it, fill the stuff out. It will send you right over. We'll email you over the um, PDF, the document for you, and you will have that at your disposal to be able to make sure you're prepared reading over all this stuff. So guys, I hope this week's episode was helpful. If you want to get in contact with us, you can definitely um, contact me on Facebook. That is the Learn, Laugh, Bark podcast or on dogtraininacademy.com Facebook page. You can also email us at contact at at ondogtrainingacademy.com. Um, continue to, to support us here, guys, with the podcast, with the YouTube. We really appreciate it. Like I already mentioned, this has been super fun talking to everybody. Uh, the YouTube thing is new, and to us, it is just another way that we can communicate with people and help people. So share this with your friends. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. It would help us out a lot. And, of course, it will keep you guys updated with the most recent uh, podcasts that come available. And we're going to be putting out more content. I'm actually going to be starting to do a little bit more. So we're going to have some other playlists and things popping up on our YouTube channel that's going to have more content for you guys. So make sure you guys check that stuff out. But, guys, thank you for listening. And, as always, we'll see you next week.